his suit up here. Well, you'll be itching to get gone by the time it's over. But again, thank you for joining us at the official flag raising and kickoff of, Saint, of the Pride Week 2013 for St. John's Pride, Inc. Woo! All right. It's great that we always seem to have a sunny day on the flag raising. It really does say St. John's is welcoming us as the LBGT community and is celebrating us as being a part of society here in Newfoundland and Labrador. You know, when we think of Pride Week, many things come to mind. The start of it all at the Stonewall Riots so many years ago, to the defeat most recently of the Defense of Marriage Act in the States, Woo! and the fact that we as people are protected throughout our country and province. But another important piece to remember and reflect on during our time of celebration is what it means to be a part of the LBGT community. To be in a community means to identify, to live and work with others similar to yourself. To have community means to care for one another, to work together for the greater good, and to care for one another. We have that in the LBGT community. At work, at play, in life, we take care of one another in our struggle and in our journey to show people that we are just like everybody else and do not want to be judged based on who we love. Our journey as a community is to show the world that we are everyday people. We work at everyday jobs, some of us lawyers, teachers, service providers, food industry workers. We have families with children, parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, pets. We have fun with sports, writing, hunting, painting. We are everyday people who happen to love someone. And that, like our jobs, our families, and our fun, is just a piece of who we are. And that, along with everything else, makes our community as diverse and unique as our own individual experiences. We have come in leaps and bounds since the days of Stonewall, past the days where it was a crime in Canada to be homosexual, and on a path to acceptance and understanding of our brothers and sisters in the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans community. But we did this together, as a community, and there's still work to be done. Our brothers and sisters, and those who identify with neither, under the trans umbrella are still not fully legally protected on a federal or provincial level. We must work to make sure that all those in our community are protected on the streets and have the protection of the law from being attacked or unjustly fired from their workplace because of their appearance and work for greater understanding through knowledge and education. We must work together as a community to show younger generations the warmth and care that is within our community. To let them know that they have people who care and love them just the way they are, no matter who they love. We must work to make sure that these children and young people do not take their own lives before they can experience the love that the world has to offer. before they can escape the relentless bullies at the schoolyard and at home. We can do this together, united as a community. So when you think about Pride at one of the many events, remember where we have come as a community, where we are as a community, and where we have yet to go. The LBGT community has love and compassion and united together, we will see a world where we are accepted just like everybody else. And with that, we'll brighten the world with a rainbow that is as unique as we are. Happy Pride, everybody, and thanks for coming out again. <laughs> to invite the Mayor of St. John's, uh, Mayor Dennis O'Keefe. Thank you. Well, it's not every day, you know, that 
I see a bunch of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians who are striving to get out of the sun. <laughs> Normally, as we all know, when the sun shines, you can always tell a Newfoundlander and Labradorian because we run toward the sun because it's out and it's nice and warm just like life should be and we kind of gravitate toward it. But I guess where it's at least 32 and maybe beyond now, uh, I had thought coming down here, I said, now, if, I, if I'm going to sit in the sun with my complexion, my red hair used to be redder, and my freckles, I burn and peel, peel and burn, burn and peel. And uh, many of you, I'm sure, are like that. So I, I notice there are as many people in the shade as there are sitting in the middle of the sun, or in the middle of the, the sun's rays. I want to thank all of you for being here today. I remember this day last year, and it was pretty well the same kind of a day, I do believe. <laughs> when we, we all gathered here and uh, we pretty well baked like we're baking today but we enjoyed it. It's really really important that, that we gather here to symbolize Pride Week and to begin Pride Week because to me Pride Week is a symbol of our evolution. Our evolution as an egalitarian society. You know, one in which all of us are equal, irrespective of our color, irrespective of our nature, irrespective of our gender, irrespective of our religion. And it's really, really important that more and more and more of us feel that sense of community, that sense of togetherness that recognizes the importance of all of us being allowed to realize our full potential as we live our lives and to live our lives as naturally as we are meant to live our lives. And it's only then, it's only when we reach that pinnacle that we will have achieved what I, what I refer to as full maturity. And it's, it's a long, long road. But we get there. We get there one step at a time. And gathering here today, celebrating Pride Week, being here as a community, representing the city of St. John's, all of us representing the, the community of St. John's and the different aspects of our lives here in St. John's, this is what makes an event like this today and Pride Week so very, very, very important. And so I am delighted to be here again this year and I look forward to being here again next year and being a part of Pride Week and being a part of that progression because that's what it is. It's a progression toward being a more mature city and a more mature society in which all of us can live our lives and realize our potential and have an acceptable quality of life, an equal quality of life. So keep it going, keep the gathering, keep celebrating Pride Week. All of us should keep celebrating our own individual natures. And it's only as we do that that we will reach that final pinnacle, pinnacle of absolute maturity as a society and as a city. But we're, we're getting there, we're getting there gradually, and uh, I'm delighted to see all of you here again today. Thank you. Uh, uh, Minister for the Environment, Conservation, and Member for Harbour Grace, uh, Mr. Tom Henderson. Oh. Thanks so much for the one connection, uh, although I love Harbour Grace. <laughs> <laughs> it's Harbour Lane. I like Harbour I gotta cover boat angles there. <laughs> That's, that's, that's quite all right. Uh, again, that's about diversity. And, uh, we all make mistakes. And uh, right here, right now, I can't think of a better place to be than right here on this podium or by this podium celebrating a tremendous, tremendous event. 
I can hardly believe that uh, that this is the, the this is the celebration that uh, I could not believe that I would see in my lifetime as a teacher, as a former educator. I understand, or did understand, the issues of trying to deal uh, with the challenge, and uh, I'm hopeful that we have advanced far beyond what I experienced back in high school and as a teacher. But it's a wonderful day to celebrate the diversity of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. And I'm so pleased to be here today on behalf of our Premier Kathy Dunderdale and the Honorable Charlene Johnson, lead minister for the Violence Prevention Initiative, to bring greetings and to thank St. John's Pride for the invitation to join today's celebration. Pride Week provides an opportunity for us as a provincial government to take a firm stance against discrimination and violence towards lesbians, gay, gay, bisexual, and transgender persons, and to promote self-affirmation, dignity, and equality rights. It's also an opportunity to highlight the numerous gains that have been made in recent years for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender persons. Tremendous headway has been made in the last decade, and there have been broader public awareness and understanding of the experiences and challenges faced by the LGBT community. This year's theme of community, most appropriate, is it truly speaks to the driving force between these recent gains, and it's very appropriate for this week to de design to celebrate the diversity of our LGBT residents. To the hard work and the dedication of community groups and volunteers, many of you who are here today, we as a province are making important progress in spreading the message of equality and inclusion. The provincial government is committed to embracing and celebrating, celebrating the diversity of all people in this beautiful province of ours. To the Violence Prevention Initiative, our government continues to work with community partners to address the root causes of violence against those populations most at risk, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender individuals. We continue to move forward on a number of initiatives to prevent violence against all people at risk. This year, we were very pleased to distribute $90,000 to begin my Gay Straight Alliance resource for our provincial schools. And this is what I was referencing. <laughs> in my experience as an administrator, as a teacher, that I was handcuffed. I did not have the understanding, the awareness, nor the resources to deal with students coming to me and asking for help. And it put me in an odd position. But again, I'm so delighted that one of the first places that we're going is into the schools, which is so, so important. And this is a significant uh, achievement because we're breaking ground. And not only are we breaking ground, right, but we are leading the way across this nation. And this is the most important for my provide support for administrators, teachers, and students who want to establish a gay straight alliance in their schools. Development and develop in partnership with EGAL Canada, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador is very pleased to know that our province is the first province in the country to offer such a resource to all schools that offer grade 7 I lost my, 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 head, my uh, armband, but they have been distributed around today. So again, make sure you include that in your, in your dress today. Uh, we are proud to be leading the way amongst all regions of the country in developing a culture of acceptance and respect <laughs> amongst our youth. We all know there is still more work to be done. Uh, we wish this was an end, but this is perhaps in many ways uh, a continuation of a beginning and we have a long way to go as a government, as a community, as a province. And as a government, we are committed to working with our community partners to provide supports for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender individuals, and to continue to build safe, violent-free communities for all provinces in our, uh, for all towns and communities in our province. We are pleased to see the growth this year in this event. Right? You've expanded, you've built the bond. What we all thought was a fabulous thing, but you've made it more fabulous. And again, I cannot say enough about the people who are behind this. As 
right? Your, you and your group are doing just absolutely tremendous work. And not only for St. John's, with all due regard to the mayor, but I understand that there are events that are continuing throughout Newfoundland and Labrador, and we need more of them. Yes. We need this, this flag raised in every community across the country. There you go. <laughs> For a week, we wish that people make sure that they continue it for 365 days, year in and year out. And in other areas of the province, you know, we know that we have to counteract homophobia and transphobia. This shows, this shows, this flag raising today shows the people of this province the commitment that is needed to make a difference. And you are making a tremendous difference. So I'm happy, very happy to see such a good turnout here today, and I encourage all residents to participate in some of the great events that are planned over the next few days and help promote the equality of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender persons. All, and I say all Newfoundlanders and Labradors, have the right to live, to work, and learn in violence-free communities. Each and every one of us each and every one of us have to take a responsibility, a role, to make sure that this comes the reality that it must. <laughs> Again, I uh, am very, very pleased to be here representing the Premier and our Minister. And uh, their not been able to come has given me a wonderful opportunity to be in this community today. I wish you well as you can continue absolute fabulous work. And we need more mayors like this mayor behind us and councillors to improve and make sure that we are doing everything we can to celebrate the pride. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Henderson. I'd like, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Jack Harris, MP for St. John's East and uh, defense critic of the NDP in Ottawa. Say a few words. congratulate St. John's Pride on the opening of Pride Week for, for St. John's Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, it's a very important uh, uh, event because it does celebrate the diversity that we have in our community and the respect that we have for each other and the work that's been done over the many, many decades to get the kind of recognition uh, and, and anti-discrimination and engender a, a community of, of tolerance and respect uh, that's so important for us uh, to have in, in our community. The work still goes on. Uh, just this year, as I'm sure you all know, uh, pro some progress has been made at the federal level with the inclusion of uh, transgender rights in the Canada Human Rights Code. At least we're halfway there with Bill C-279. And I'm very proud to sit, in, to sit in a caucus with people like Randall Garrison, like Libby Davies, like uh, Danny Moran, and a number of others who've been uh, actively promoting uh, the, the cause in, in Parliament, uh, certainly within our caucus alone. Uh, the NDP, as anyone here knows, has been supported at the provincial and federal level for many, many yes. years. Woo! During the <laughs> with the support of 17 members of the Conservative Party, for which we are grateful. It still has to get to the Senate, so any of you who are into letter writing or urging uh, that so-called uh, second chamber of sober second thought, please urge them to abide by the will of the House of Commons and pass this bill quickly. There is more work to be done, uh, and I know that uh, you are very anxious to see it done. Uh, I also know that uh, we'll be there with you with the task, with the heavy lifting needs to be done, when legislation needs to be passed. Have a great Pride Week. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Harris. Now I'd like to invite the leader of the Newfoundland Labrador New Democratic Party and member for Signal Hill Kitty Bitty, Ms. Lorraine Michael. Thank you very much, Noah. Thanks to you and the organizing committee once again for the opportunity to bring greetings from the New Democratic Party of Newfoundland and Labrador. It's uh, always a highlight of the summer to be here 
and if I'm not mistaken, it's three summers in a row that we've baked. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, yes, and we uh, keep getting more people every year. So keep the sun coming, and let's keep coming and celebrating pride. It's a real honor to stand in solidarity with the LGBT community. And, uh, you know, I'm, one of the things I'm so proud of is that in our caucus, we have an extremely proud member of that community, Jerry Rogers, who is our <laughs> president. All right. And you are, you are going to get an opportunity to hear from Jerry, so I'm not going to say anything that I know she's going to say. Uh, I am proud of the fact that we as a party, both provincially and as Jack just said, federally, do stand behind everything that your community stands for, and that includes ge the identification of gender identity in the list of uh, <laughs> discriminations listed in the Human Rights Code. And uh, that's, something <laughs> that <laughs> that's something that we will continue working for here in this province. I'm delighted with what's happening in Ottawa. And we have to hope that the Senate will be smart and will be wise and will listen and will pass the bill that Jack has referred to and I know that Jerry's going to talk about again. And I want that to happen because then, hopefully, uh, provinces like ours who have not yet woken up to that will say, okay, the leadership should, it should happen whether the leadership comes from Ottawa or not, but if it happens in Ottawa, it probably will make our case stronger here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So as I've done before, and it's all I'm going to do today, is to, to continue to promise you our commitment for standing behind everything that you're working for, that you're fighting for, because as long as one member of the LGBT community identified out, in, not, as long as there's one person who's being discriminated against and doesn't feel safe, and doesn't feel that they can stand proudly and say who they are, then the cause continues. And we will be there with you, and I hope to be there at some of the celebrations this week. Have a fantastic week. We're actually, we're actually having a slight change of plans right now. The mayor's been so gracious to be here today on his day off. So before he has to leave for another engagement, we're actually going to raise the flag now. Oh. As part of Pride this year, we've made it a mandate of ours to make it the most inclusive Pride to date. And to help symbolize that, we are going to raise the transgender flag as well as the rainbow flag. sticks around now. I know that's like the keystone point, but we're going to hear a few more speakers right now. I'd like to invite the only openly member of our community in the House of Assembly right now, member for St. John's Center, Jerry Rogers. Thank you so much, Noah. It is so very, very good to be here. Uh, hang on, a little technical difficulty. Um, Um, and it's so good to be here with my colleagues from the House of Assembly, Minister Henderson and Lorraine Michael, our, our leader, 
representatives from City Hall and the mayor. Like, how fantastic is that? Members of unions, whether it be student unions and, or other unions, organizations, all kinds of organizations are represented here today. It is so fabulous. It's absolutely fantastic to be here. And to my LGBTQ community, you look marvelous. our community and the work that we have done and how marvelous we look in all our splendor and our diversity uh, and I want to thank Noah and the, uh, the Pride 2013 committee for bringing us Pride again this year and we can never be too proud uh, in June and July in June and July all over the world people are raising pride flags and transgender flags. Some very publicly in celebration, some very clandestinely and in defiance because it's illegal in their country. And I met a young woman who said that in fear, she hangs her pride flag in her closet where she can open her closet door every day and feel that sense of connection with the LGBTQ community worldwide. To raise a pride flag and a transgender flag is to tell a story. And that story has many chapters. It is a story about sacrifice. It is a story about community. It is a story about members of the LGBT community who have lost their lives, who have lost their jobs, who have lost their families, who have lost their community, who have lost their housing. And it is also in order that all of us can be free, that all of us can be where we are here today. And so I am proud of who we are. I am proud of how far we have come. And it's also when we raise those flags it's also a story of joy, of strength, of celebration, and of resilience. But, my friends, our work is not done. We do have several things to celebrate here in Newfoundland and Labrador. We are perhaps leaders in the area of LGBTQ education in our schools. And that is a wonderful thing. And that's because of the fantastic people in the Department of Education who have worked so hard. It's because of the fantastic partnership that we have with EGAL Canada through the persistence, the dogged persistence of Sue Rowe. Yeah. And that's Woo. going to be the executive director of EGAL. And as I look out in the audience, I see so many, so many fantastic members of the LGBTQ community who have been activists, who have done their work with audacity, with style, with determination, with resilience. And on behalf of our community, I say thank you to all of you. Sexual orientation is enshrined in our Human Rights Act. But now we have to go further, and we know that. And we know that our rights have never been given to us. They have been hard won. We have had to work with that persistence, with that determination, with that de audacity, and with that style for the rights that we have. No one has given us our rights. And we must never, ever, ever forget that. Trans folks are still not explicitly included in our Human Rights Act. And this is not good. Trans folks are still among the most misunderstood, vilified, condemned and discriminated people in our society. And they have the least explicit rights and protections in our Human Rights Act. This is not acceptable. And over the last two years, I have stood repeatedly in the House of Assembly and demanded that our Ministers of Justice, two past, two, a past member Minister of Justice and a current one, that they amend our Human Rights Act to include, explicitly include, gender identity and gender expression. Right. My friends, they have refused. There is no valid reason not to do the right thing. It is time. 
It is beyond time to do the right thing. Our Human Rights Act must be agenda, uh, amended. It must be amended to include gender identity and to include gender expression. It is time for this government to do the right thing. Here, here. The United Nations has done it. South Africa has done it. The Northwest Territories, Manitoba, Nova Scotia just recently so proudly Nova Scotia so proudly amended their Human Rights Act, and they haven't fallen apart. <laughs> as has Quebec is well on its way. Ontario has done it. So my friends, this week let us celebrate. Let us celebrate the great work that has been done by the LGBTQ community and our allies. Let us celebrate the great work that has been done by lesbians and gays and transgender folks all through the ages and throughout the world. And let us continue to raise our flags and let us continue to tell our stories. And let us continue to dance. This week we will dance, we will bowl, we will sing, we will, we will tell our stories. But let us also conspire, let us agitate. Let there you us go. insist, let us persist, <laughs> and tell everyone, everyone has full and equal protection under the law. <laughs> where no one, my friends, where no one, no one is left behind. And let us do the right thing. And let all of us push this government to do the right thing. Let us all together in unity scream out now, do the right thing. To this government, let us say together, do the right, right thing. thing. It's time. And as Tommy Douglas, the founder of the NDP said, don't let them tell you it can't be done. Happy Pride. <laughs> current executive director for the Love and Learning, and a past president of EGAL Canada, Ms. Gemma Hickey. Hooray! Yeah. Woo! Woo! That's Jerry Rogers. A round of applause for Jerry Rogers. Uh -huh. Give her a round of applause. A round of applause for the Brad Committee. Woo! What are y'all doing on there? Come up and show me some love. Come on. Show some love. Get up here. Now, I'm all about equality, but not that close. Just joking. I'm all about equality, but I have to say, don't we as a community have more fun than our straight brothers and sisters? I, I, think I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. I actually prepared something. It's going to be very quick. Now, I've been kicking around for some time. Over the years, I've been on TV and radio lots. I've spoken a bunch of rallies and protests. I've traveled the country to challenge the courts, educate the public, and leave tall stereotypes in a single bound. And you probably think, to do all that, a person has to be really comfortable with who they are. And that's true. But I'm going to tell you a little secret, just between us. When I was 16, I attempted suicide. As a result, I had to spend some time in hospital to recover from the physical effects of the overdose. I came from an upper middle class family, was popular at school, got good grades, played sports and sat on school committees. So those who knew me were shocked by what I tried to do. The reason I wanted to take my own life, I'm gay. After I came out, I realized that all my homophobia was internalized. My friends and families, even my teachers were cool. But I was one of the lucky ones. Despite the death threats, damage to my property, and the public humiliation of being spit on, which I experienced later on in life as an out gay activist, the overall result was actually very positive. And that's only my story. There are so many other stories. Some of which will be performed 
in For the Love of Learning's production of the Queer Monologues, which hits the stage this Friday at the Arts and Culture Center, opening night of the Queer Theater Festival. Awesome. Woo! During the last four months, director Natalia Hanley and I have had the pleasure of working closely with 10 brave young people, some of whom will be taking the stage for the very first time to tell their story. We've had lots of laughs, shed some tears, hugged, high-fived, and fist-pumped each other after each rehearsal. And just the other day, one of them told me that I was their hero. And I replied, you're my hero just as much as I'm yours. Right. Jake, Amy, Robin, Katie, Philip, David, Aaron, Riley, and Noah, this one is for you. Happy Pride. All right. Thank you very much, Jim. Fabulous as always. Now I'd like to introduce someone who's not new, and I, I think her gray hairs might be a bit toned now. She's going to kill me for saying that. But I'd like to introduce the current president of EGAL Canada, Miss Sue Rose. All right. <laughs> 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 I decided for our last uh, Easter to let my hair go and be natural. I'm here all about education. Obviously, uh, I want to say thank you to Noah and the Pride Committee for putting this together, 2013. We're going to have a fabulous week again. I know everyone is hot and overwhelmed, and I'm going to I'm going to just say this very quickly. As you know, I'm about education. It's about education. It's about gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender protection in their schools. <laughs> That's a biggie. It's about inclusion in your schools. And it's funny because uh, coming here, I asked a couple of my friends what they thought about Pride and why we needed Pride. One was a 55-year-old male who's out. He's been with his partner for 20 years. I assumed he was out at work, and I asked him what he thought of Pride. He said, pride really, really upsets me. Pride should stop. I'm tired of it. It's damaging to the gay, lesbian, bi, transgender community. I just about fell off the floor. I fell off the chair at the, at the, the, the table where we were sitting at. And lo and behold, after talking to this man that I've known for about 35 years, he is not out in the corporate world. He's a banker. He's not out. Many of our banks support us. The TD Bank supports us. <laughs> The Royal Bank supports us. The CIBC Bank supports us. And yet we've got a banker right at the top that spent 30 years in banking and is not out. And he finds that when we talk about pride and the pride parade, he gets upset because at his workplace, in the boardrooms, up and above, where they're all making millions and millions of dollars, he cannot come out. Sad. Why? Again, it's about education. It's about education. As Jerry said, we do not, you know, we still do not have our transgender brothers and sisters protected. This is appalling. This is Canada. This is 2013. Every one of us need to be protected under the Human Rights Code. That's something we're going to be lobbying for. Um, as a new commander in Labradorian, uh, Minister Henderson said it, I am so proud to say that we are leading the way in LGBT education in Canada. We are still the only province in Canada where it's a mandatory full day workshop for every educator in this province. We're coming back in the fall to finish up with the teachers. Again, this is the beginning. This is the beginning. Because the Stats Canada show, and we just got our, our latest stats release from Stats Canada. There's an issue in some of our larger cities in Canada. We're noticing an increase in hate crime particularly directed towards the gay community. Gay men are becoming more and more of a target in areas like Vancouver, in areas like Halifax, in areas like Toronto. This is a big issue. Why is this happening? Why do we have gangs of, of young men between the ages, and most of them that are charged, I think is 92%, between the ages of 12 and, and 20, going around at night beating up gay men? and beating up transgender individuals. And, and, and the other reality is, the most unsafe institutions in our country today are our schools and our universities. This is appalling. 
as an educator myself who left the education system because in 2006 I came out in 1998 but I could not maneuver my work environment as an out lesbian teacher. I had a supportive loving partner, supportive loving family and friends and I could not navigate the poisoned environment I was exposed to. So thank God, since we did our survey, we did a survey, homophobia, Canadian students, homophobia and transphobia in Canadian schools. That opened the door. And again, I'm so proud to say that we were the first ministry to implement the mandatory educational system, the safe school system, a safe school program. We have things happening in Ontario, Manitoba, Alberta, and New Brunswick. Okay? Lots of good things happening, but none of them are mandatory. So we have many religious boards still in, these, in, in, in uh, New Brunswick, in Ontario, Manitoba, where Catholic schools and other religious schools where the mention of the word gay gets a sick kid sent to the guidance counselor communicating that there's something so horribly wrong with us that we have to be counseled Look instead out. of accepted. So that's a big issue. So again, we're here today because we are celebrating where we've come. We're celebrating the people that have brought us here, like Jerry Rogers, who was out meeting with government. When I was coming to this pride parade in the 90s, in disguise, with a wig and a hat on, because I could not be out as a teacher. So we've come a long way, baby. But we've got a long way to go. And until every school in this country when they enter kindergarten and they start to learn about same-sex families and bisexual families and transgender families from kindergarten on up through and not just in language arts, in our science, in our math. We have a complete curriculum put together for any school in Canada from K to 12 until every school has policy, every teacher has been trained and every homophobic comment and transphobic comment is addressed immediately. Over time, we will change. So until every school is safe, I will be continuing this, and we still need pride. And thank you all for coming out. It's the youth, like the outshine. When we did that, we, we, got, we got 300 youth from across Canada together this year in Toronto, and 100 educators for the first Gay Straight Alliance Conference ever in Canada. Right. Amazing. Hey, it's the youth that are saying, I've had enough, and they came up with, they came up, and I'm just going to share very quickly. The themes they came up with four years later after our survey, this is what our youth said in May. We need more education about who we are in our schools. We need to be visible and included in our schools. We are dying. We lose about five to six hundred kids a year. Thirty to forty percent, we're not sure, but are gay, lesbian, and transgender. That's a crime. Okay? That's a crime. And until, until this is the, two other things that they said that we need to be able to have rules and policies that protect us and we need to be able to graduate feeling good about who we are because if we graduate with our self-esteem intact and feeling good about who we are, we can do anything in the world. So here's to our Thank you. Sociology at the University, my favorite boss and founder of Make a Better Newfoundland Labrador, Dr. Elsa Craig. Right. Um, I'm really proud to be here for the flag raising this year. Uh, Make It Better is an initiative that works to promote and support awareness of sexual and gender diversity to provide resources and to advocate for change. Our aim is to work with LGBTQ youth and allies and our larger communities to make it better now. To say that we need to make it better now might sound like a demand, which it is, of sorts. It's hard to be patient. Sometimes it's really hard. And it takes more than the passage of time for things to get better. It takes more than the passage of time to make the kind of change we need so that lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, and gender diverse people live free from discrimination, free from abuse and violence, free to access required and appropriate medical treatment, housing and employment, free to express ourselves at home, at work, at school, in our communities, and in love. There is so much that we need to do, 
but also there's so much that we've done. And so much has been achieved. And so much that is on its way. We're doing it. We will continue to do it. And the way we do it is to build community. Community that feeds us and that welcomes all of us, that honors the differences among us, and celebrates the ways that we connect with one another. Look at the work that EGAL has been doing and continues to do, making Newfoundland and Labrador a leader in LGBTQ inclusion and outreach in our schools. Look at Planned Parenthood and Camp Eclipse and the continued incredible contributions that they are making right now and into the future. Look at LBGT MUN and MUNSU and the work that they do on campus and beyond. And remember that this year, the National Canadian University Queer Services Conference was held right here and brought trans activist and journalist Janet Mock, as well as Eli Clare, Clare a trans, queer, and disability activist, both of them brought to us as passionate, insightful, and inspiring keynote speakers, not only for the conference, but for the larger community as well. Look at the work of the Transgender Health Services Network of Providers with Eastern Health and the Mun Trans Needs Committee, and look at all that Jerry Rogers has done and continues to do in so many, many ways as our first out MHA. And look at PFLAG, our parents, our friends, our children, and our allies who stand with us, support us, and love us, and remember too, the ongoing work of the St. John's Pride Committee, who once again have organized an amazing week of events, and we cannot take that for granted. Right. Look also to the work of Spectrum Choir, showing us how we can raise our voices together in song and celebration and friendship, and of GSAs across the province where you turn to one, or, one another and come out together stronger. Look at the work of For the Love of Learning and the Queer Theater Festival and those who have come together to perform the queer monologues later this week. Look at the work of all of the organizations and groups of people who come together, officially and unofficially, to support each other, to work together, and to share company. We've done a lot, we've shared a lot, and we've built a lot. And we have a lot of people to thank. We have so many accomplishments to celebrate. Because making it better now is not only a demand, it's also an encouragement. It's a goal. It's a way to put one foot in front of the other on the days that feel lonely, on the days that feel sad, on the days that feel hard, and on the days that feel angry. Sometimes it's hard to see the big picture of change that we are all a part of. And sometimes the big picture can be too much to take in, or it feels like there's just too much to do. But making it better now, as best we can in each and every moment is a set of instructions for lasting change and resilient community. Because building community is how we're going to see this through. It's how we're going to see each other through. And building community is something that we do in small acts and everyday moments. Building community means that we stop to acknowledge the work and time that's been put in for the changes that we see, and we say thank you. Building community means that we listen to each other, we make each other tea. It means we laugh together, and we eat together, and we cry together. It means that we hold on to each other, and we make space for each other, and we try to make a soft place for every single one of us to land. It means that we make art, and we make theater, and we see it, and we march, and we rage, and we dance, and we dance whenever we feel like dancing. Emily Dickinson wrote, Forever is composed of now. So let's make it better now. And now. Yes, yes. <laughs> and now. All right. And how about now? Yeah. Woo -hoo! Thank you all so much and happy Pride. All right. <laughs> now do you see why I love her? <laughs> now I'd like to introduce uh, two of the Interrupts of P Flag Canada, the Newfoundland Labrador chapter, Charles Murphy and Kenneth Galili. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, congrats on Noah for pronouncing my name. I really didn't ah. expect that was going to happen. <laughs> but um, we just came to say a few words. Uh, I know it's I think it's both our first time coming to the flag raising ceremony on behalf of P Flag. Um, me and Charlie have been with the flag for about a year now. It's close to one year. Um, we came during a time when it was kind of dwindling. There wasn't a lot of uh, hands to be able to get things going with it. Uh, there were a lot of other commitments and work to be done from people who were involved. 
so we decided we'd take it on and uh, we're kind of just keeping it up and making sure it's still here and available for everybody. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, um, just we want to talk a little bit about where Peak Light came from. So the idea for Peak Light began in 1972 when um, Jean Manford walked with her son Morty in New York's Christopher Street Liberation Day March. This was a precursor to today's Pride Parade. Um, after many gay and lesbian people ran up to Jean during the parade and begged her to talk to their parents, she decided to begin a support group. The first formal meeting took place on March 26, 1973 at the Metropolitan Duane Methodist Church in Greenwich Village, nice. now the Church of the Village. Approximately 20 people attended. By 1980, P Flag, then known as Parents Flag, began to distribute information to educational institutions and communities of faith nationwide, establishing itself as a source of information for the general public. Sadly, Jean Manford passed away in January 8th of this year. Though she may be gone, her spirit will remain with those that stand for equality. On February 15, 2013, Manford's daughter Suzanne Manford Swan accepted the Presidential Citizens Medal, the second highest civilian award given by the United States for her work in co-founding the flag and ongoing years of LGBT.
Planned Parenthood believes that community partnerships are essential in achieving the common values and respect, uh, the respect and the inclusivity that is common to our uh, collective values. Planned Parenthood is particularly proud of the community partnerships that uh, we have built, uh, the people that we have worked with, the organizations we have worked with in to uh, create significant change in our communities around us. Uh, for example, the uh, LGBT youth group uh, is a space uh, filled with supportive leaders and providers of social su uh, support opportunities for youth to meet other youth and connect with, uh, to meet, connect with supportive peers, supportive mentors, and to build those friendships and those connections that are important to the development of our strong sense of self that carries us forward. Every year at Camp Eclipse, leaders and mentors work together to create a space where youth are empowered to become leaders. This empowerment comes not only from the skills and knowledge that they are given at camp, but from the sense of belonging and the sense of respect and the sense of self-worth that there is gained from being a part of a community. This community shows that youth, that they are valued and that they are accepted and that they, uh, there are people out there ready to support them. This year, Planned Parenthood is particularly proud of the work that uh, it is doing, joining with the trans community to effect real change here in St. John's and across Newfoundland and Labrador. By working with the, as a community, Planned Parenthood, along with the Trans Needs Committee and the uh, Mun Student Center, Student Service Center, and other community partners will be offering uh, healthcare workshops to healthcare service providers, which will increase the province's capacity to meet healthcare needs of the trans community. <laughs> it's been long needed. With support from Mun Student Services, the Department of Health, the U.S. Consulate, and the United Way of Newfoundland and Labrador. In November, we will be bringing a team from the Sherwood Health Center in Toronto and a medical expert in the spring to offer these workshops to help serve healthcare service providers, mental health care providers, and community support providers the very needed and uh, valuable skills that they need in working with trans clients and community members. Um, this is uh, but one step uh, that is part of a larger process. There is certainly more work that needs to be done, but we are proud that this is what we have to contribute, and we are hoping that the initiative and the momentum that is generated from events like this, from workshops like these, can be carried forward and contribute to a larger, uh, a larger movement. The key component to our work is community. Whether it's a community of service providers, a community of activists, a community of organizers, or a community of just people who want to get together to make a difference, have fun, and possibly melt a little bit under the sun. <laughs> Planned Parenthood believes that great and wonderful things happen when we work in communities. Communities that believe and practice respect and inclusion. So let's get that out there this week and uh, build those communities together. Thank you very much. And that concludes our flag raising and the oh. official start of Pride Week 2013. Right. Now we've got to make a, a couple of plugs. We've got uh, Pride on campus at Bitters Bar tomorrow, 7.30, Pride Solidarity Breakfast. You can find a lot of our Pride members around the board. Uh, we're having tomorrow night is uh, a Taste of Pride Decadence. It's a, a 